I just got Alan Miller and this is my life living in Nicaragua. A lot of people coming to the tropics, which Nicaragua is a part of, are often wondering what the situation is with yellow fever. Is it something they have to worry about? Do they have to get a vaccine? Will it apply to you? That's a question that we can answer here on the show. So we're gonna tackle that today. What is the situation that you're gonna be looking like and how do you find out more information about it, about yellow fever and yellow fever vaccines? Right after that bump. So every country in the world has a different set of regulations about yellow fever. So depending on where you're going, you probably should look it up specifically there and be aware that it is common for airlines to require that you have yellow fever, blaming the country that you're heading to regardless of the actual regulations in that country. So this is an important thing to simply know that this can happen and there are this is relatively rare, but it can happen that you're going to be traveling and be stuck in a situation where you end up needing yellow fever vaccine. So before we get into any of the like specific details, it is a pretty general traveler's requirement that if you're going to be doing broad travel that leaves the northern North America, right, US and Canada, uh, Mexico, that area, and then Europe, right, if, if you're leaving that zone, then quite commonly you want to have yellow fever as a vaccine. And just like during the COVID era, people would carry around COVID cards and have to show it. Travelers have always had to carry yellow fever cards. This is a very standard thing. We are used to it. Yellow fever is a nasty disease and there is no treatment for it once you have it. So it's very important that it not spread and that people not get it. And it is a major problem in the tropics. So what is yellow fever? So anywhere that has the mosquito, so anywhere that has chikungunya or dengue as things that occur there is at risk for having yellow fever spread. So any place basically in the tropics, so from Northern Central America, Southern Mexico, and down all the way to Argentina, you have at least a risk that someone who's been infected with yellow fever could then be bitten by a mosquito that could then transmit it on to someone else. And everyone's really worried about that. Same thing in Africa, basically everything that's sub-Saharan all the way down to Angola has some amount of risks. I don't believe Morocco and the desert countries have, have any real risk from that. And I don't believe South Africa does, but you have a very large swath of area, huge global population in these two areas. Notably, there's no native yellow fever uh, uh, risk in Asia at this time, but uh, there's a huge population of Asians living in the tropics, and so they are very wary of the possibility of the mosquitoes and disease moving into the region. And so they often are very, very uh, diligent about having yellow fever vaccines for travelers to make sure that they don't end up with it because it would be a major problem there. It would spread through the region very, very quickly and do a lot of damage. In uh, the native populations of South America and Africa, you have a fairly high survival rate because you have um, uh, an acquired immunity that's been going on for thousands of years. And if you have populations coming from like Europe or Asia, the fatality rate is extremely high because there's very little immunity built into the DNA at this point. So uh, you, when you're a traveler, you're at a much higher risk than the people that you are visiting in most cases. So that's something to be aware of. And it's one of the reasons that we tend to recommend yellow fever as a vaccine for people if you're going anywhere that may end up with a little bit of risk. Now, if you're going nowhere with no risk at all, no, you don't want the vaccine because it's, it, it can be a nasty vaccine. Um, of all the vaccines I've ever had, I've never had anything affect me except for yellow fever. Not a huge deal for me, not a huge deal for most people, but it is not a shot that you get and simply ignore. You probably are going to feel it. But that is because yellow fever is a seriously nasty disease. It is not like dengue, chikungunya, malaria. Most of those, while unpleasant for sure, they are serious viral diseases, right? But yellow fever is a degree more severe. It has uh, a a really high rate of infection. Uh, it The way that it typically works is something like two thirds or three quarters of all cases are severe cases. Of course, asymptomatic, it's hard to know how many of those 
there are, but mild cases make up a small percentage, not the majority. Of those that get it will be mostly severe. Of those that are severe, the majority will have a recurrence with an extremely high fatality rate. Now, just because you get it, it is not a death sentence, but there's no treatment for it other than symptomatic treatments, meaning like if you have a cough, they can try to keep you from coughing. If you have a fever, they can try to keep you from burning up, but that is about it. You are not able to actually lessen the, the risks of the disease, only treat the symptoms. That's really important. So if you get it, your, your potential for being a fatality is lower than 50%. But in a giant number, something like 25 to 40 percent, like it's really, really risky. And the way that it works and the reason that it's called yellow fever is because of those who have it severe, who then typically you get over the first set of symptoms, it goes away for a couple days and then it comes back at that point. It tends to cause liver damage, causing you to get jaundice and actually turn yellow. That's where the term yellow fever comes from. That jaundice tends to lead to kidney problems as well. Even if you survive, you're very likely to have ongoing organ problems as it does a lot of permanent damage. But because of the types of organs that it is attacking, it has a tendency to kill its host as well. So you wanna be really careful to not get yellow fever if you can at all help it. This is not a unpleasant shake it off kind of disease. This is one you certainly want to avoid. This is so much worse than a dengue, chikungunya, malaria, COVID, flu, cold, anything like that. This is dramatically worse. So uh, for me, for example, I don't worry about getting uh, vaccinations for anything else. I do have a COVID vaccination, but that's because it's required for travel. It's required for different paperwork and not because I feel that I need it personally. Uh, but that's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but I don't get a flu shot. I don't worry about dengue shots. I don't worry about chikungunya shots, all things that are available. And some people do want to get when you're coming to Nicaragua, but you don't have to, right? I have had dengue. It's unpleasant. Not the end of the world. Yellow fever, though, I worry about getting yellow fever. That actually scares me, whereas getting dengue, chikungunya, I know that it's just going to be uh, a bit of an unpleasant fever. Now, the World Health Organization puts out a map with a list of countries in Africa and South America where you have a high risk of uh, yellow fever uh, contact, right? These are the countries that you need to be worried about that if you go there, you have a chance of ending up with yellow fever or carrying it, right? So these are countries that other countries are worried about and it makes sense. I'm going to bring up some maps. They're going to show you what the United States' CDC lists as the countries that are at great risk for yellow fever. Basically, these are the countries where yellow fever is endemic. Now, this is simply drawn from the data from the WHO, from the World Health Organization. So you're going to get the same listing anywhere you are around the world. This is just a standard list. You don't have to worry about this being different from country to country. Basically, everyone uses the WHO's data. So if you're going to be traveling to any of these countries, you definitely want to have a yellow fever vaccine and you need to have that a minimum of 10 days before you're going to travel. Now, a lot of these countries aren't going to actually require the vaccine because they already have yellow fever. They're not worried about you bringing it into the country. So this is a, they'll often leave it up to you and you're simply putting yourself at risk, not anyone else. However, in order to leave these countries, basically every country in the world is going to require that you have a mature yellow fever vaccination. So be aware, you could easily go to Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, northern Argentina, Paraguay, even parts of Colombia and Venezuela, the Suriname, Guiana, like this whole region has some amount of yellow fever risk. And so most countries are going to expect if you are returning from there. Some will tell you when you're about to travel, but some will not that if you're going to that region, and that's just South America, right? Similar in, in Africa, and it's the majority of Africa in reality. If you are going there, you need to have yellow fever in order to move on to anywhere else in the world. Definitely everyone in Asia is gonna require it. North America is gonna require it. Europe's gonna require it. Most of the bordering countries require it sometimes the most because they're at so much heightened risk. In a place like the United States where the, the weather and the type of mosquitoes make it extremely difficult for yellow fever to transmit on to another person. It is not that big of a deal, although it is becoming a big deal as the Egyptus uh, uh, mosquito has begun moving into the United States due to climate change. So that is one of the reasons that climate change is considered such a large risk to the planet. It's not just the change in temperatures and water levels and weather, but also that some of the most deadly uh, mosquitoes are starting to move into new, very heavy, heavily populated areas that they've not been exposed to before 
and bringing with them things that are traditionally considered tropical diseases uh, into populations that are not prepared for them historically. So this can be a really large uh, potential pandemic issue. So that's something that they're scared of. So that's countries are going to look out for that a lot. Now, if you're specifically talking about here in Nicaragua, it's the same as most countries. If you're going to travel to any of the countries that the WHO or the CDC list as places that have yellow fever, you are absolutely going to need uh, uh, a shot when you are returning. You're going to have to have that vaccine when you return. Now, I've heard mixed results from Panama. So Panama is sometimes on this list and sometimes not. And if you're looking at the map, they show it, but not the parts of Panama that you normally go to. So in those cases, normally they don't consider those countries to be uh, places where you just need to have the vaccine. Same with Colombia, right? If you're in Bogota, Medellin, those places are not places that have yellow fever. So if that's where you're going to be, you generally are able to return uh, to another country without a problem. But not every country considers the city that you are in. I was just in Bolivia last year and I had to have yellow fever uh, vaccine because I was going to be traveling through the country. Most uh, points of egress through the country are through uh, Santa Cruz de las Sierras, which is a city that has yellow fever, even though my time was in Cochabamba and La Paz, which are cities that do not have it due to their elevation. If you're in Panama, in Panama City, they do not have yellow fever. So you would think you'd be okay, but some places simply aren't going to consider that. So I know that a flight recently coming from Avianca to uh, Nicaragua required it, even though uh, we've definitely done flights from uh, Panama to Nicaragua before, no problems. I know lots of people who do it who do not have yellow fever, never had a problem before. I don't believe that Nicaragua uh, requires it from Panama. We have no evidence of that. But some airlines are simply going to be like, yeah, you got to have it too. We're not going to take the chance, right? They're going to make you have it. So it's often a thing you want to have because the last thing you want to do is be stuck in a country, have to go figure out how to get a vaccine at the last minute, pay for that, and then have to stay in that country for an extra 10 days. Unless, of course, you're a traveler and you're looking for an excuse not to be headed home, then it might work out perfectly for you. But in general, it is just a traveler's trick to have the yellow fever vaccine, have it under your belt, and just then be free to go anywhere, where, whenever, wherever, uh, without any additional problems. Because you don't want to be getting yellow fever. That is not something you want to play around with. But it's going to cause such a potential headache for travel. And it, if you don't have that yellow fever card, there's that opportunity for an airlines anywhere to simply go, oh, we're going to require it. And what are you going to do to say that we can't? And then you're stuck. And so if you have that at the ready, it eliminates one potential reason for not allowing you to fly or travel in some other way. Plus, it always gives you the flexibility to go anywhere at the drop of a hat rather than having to take, you know, a week and a half, two weeks to prepare. If you're here in Nicaragua, you need to get your uh, vaccination. You can do so in Managua. It's like $25, maybe $30. Uh, it's done through the Center of Salud in the middle of the city. Uh, and it's all done in one place. You can't just go to a local hospital currently. There's only one place because there's very few people who need it because there aren't that many places that Nicaraguans are likely to go uh, that, that you would require it. And the number of people who travel is just low and it's a small country. So there's only one medical facility that all offers uh, the yellow fever vaccine here, but very easy to get. Uh, and I've done it. My yellow fever vaccine is from here in Nicaragua. So um, I hope that answers questions. Uh, and of course, okay, so the thing you need to do, right, be aware of what countries have actual risk. You don't need to worry about what country you're going back to. The whole world requires that you have it if you're coming back from those countries, right? US, Canada, all of Latin America, all of Europe, all of Asia, most of Africa, the number of countries that don't require it is like four or five. Like it's crazy how few um, even look for it, right? So it's just assume no airlines is going to let you on if you've been to those countries without it. No border is going to let you in. It's just, it's just the thing you have to have. So look at the maps. And you can determine which countries are going to give you potential risk that you may need it just to be able to travel and which countries you want to have it for just because you're going to. Uh, and then if you have any questions about what the requirements are for your specific country, you can look those up. But almost all are the same. Yellow fever is very uniform worldwide. And that is if you're going to be going to those countries that are in question, almost all countries will require uh, that you have the vaccine for more than 10 days to enter their country. There are a small number of countries, very small, that will allow airport transit if you've been to those countries and do not have the vaccine. 
is few and far between, but there are a few, so that's a separate category. Uh, and then most of the countries in the world that don't require a vaccine at all are the countries where they already have so deep of infections that they just don't care and you're on your own, on your own recognizance to make your own decisions and they're not gonna coddle you or hold your hand uh, because you're not posing a risk to their population, but everywhere else, they're gonna make sure that you have it. So that is what you need to know. You can look up on your own, wherever country you're traveling to, if you have very specific questions, but generally there's extremely little that you would need to know on a country by country basis. And if, as long as you have that vaccine, you are good. Uh, traditionally, they say it's good for 10 years. They're starting to say it's good for a lifetime. So that's starting to change a little bit, but that's about it. Thanks for joining me. Like, and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, hit that like button, tell someone about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And we're going to pop some videos up on the screen. It'd be fantastic if you clicked on one of those and helped promote the show.